Hey everybody, Danny Mod here. Thanks for joining us. This week I had Mike come and see me, struggling with his driver, specifically getting a big slice with his driver, lots of curvature, but he was also struggling with his iron play a little bit. He actually hurt his wrist a couple of weeks earlier because he was hitting down into the uh, ground and, and, and really wasn't getting any, any consistency with his ball striking. So Mike actually cited a problem with his downswing that was causes. He, was, he thought, oh, why am I coming across the ball? Why am I coming down on it? The reason being, however, the real cause of the problem actually started right from the moment he took the club away. And this is what I find with a lot of golfers. What Mike was doing, he's, he got the takeaway wrong straight away. He threw this club way behind him. Now the problem is when it gets behind him, he has to recover that. His body has to do, you know, compensate, do all these kind of things to try to get the club somewhere back so he could hit the ball straighter. That is what you might be doing too. If you're finding that you're inconsistent, check out your takeaway. If your takeaway is um, in the wrong position, your body's going to have to make all these different compensations. It can work for some people, but on the whole, I found that if you get it wrong at the start, too many compensations leads to too many inconsistencies. So in this week's training, I'm going to show you how to get it right every single time, what things you should be looking for. I'll introduce you to a very simple training aid as well that can really speed up this process. Before I do though, if you're new to the channel and this is one of your first videos of mine, please consider subscribing. Press that little bell button next to the subscribe button and you get notified every time I release a video just like this one. So let's just get stuck into what you're supposed to be doing actually in the takeaway. Well, things to look out for, this is what we really want. When you get yourself set up here, you've got your line of your feet, your line of your hips, and your line of your shoulders. And what you're trying to do here is, is just as a guideline, we want to get the club shaft, when we get to about, hands to about hip height, we want the shaft completely in line with the feet, just as a checkpoint. The club face, we want completely parallel to the spine angle, just as a checkpoint. So, we don't want the club around here, we don't want it out there, and we don't want the club face facing the ground or facing the sky. We want it completely look parallel to my spine. My spine's at this angle, and we also want the club face at that angle there. Are there people in the world of golf that get it a little bit here and get it a bit there? Yes, there are. But on the whole, they are few. Most of the most consistent players in the world generally get it pretty much spot on here, and it will help you too. If you can get this right, it will really help your consistency. Question is how? So, we need to do one, uh, one of a couple of things. The issue with golf is that if I got you to say, look, if we looked at the club face first, if I got you to imagine swinging your right hand back here and coming against a wall, you would never roll your hand. You'd just move it back here and through. Same if you were left-handed player or going to backhand here. If I said to you, take your backhand, move your hand back here, move it back, you would never open the hand. This is the club face, you would keep it completely square, easy. The problem happens when a club comes in, then comes in the weight. Now this is what you've just got to be aware of. Become aware of the influence of this thing on your wrists and what their wrists do, and you'll get somewhere close to getting a great takeaway. So watch this. If I hold this club up here, what does that head want to do? It wants to fall to the ground. Hold the head up, it wants to fall to the ground. So we need to first of all resist the first force. We want to resist the force falling down. We're going to do that by getting a small kink look in the lead wrist here. The next thing we're going to do is then realize that there's also a force going this way. When you swing the club back, you're potentially also swinging the head. You swing the head too much, the head starts to flow quickly. What's that going to do if, it, if you allow it to flow out of control? It's going to keep flowing backwards and it's going to force the wrist to roll potentially inside. Like this, look at that, it's rolled over. That's because the mass at the end has influenced the wrist. So, we want to resist the influence of this thing. We want to resi resist it this way so we get a little kink in my lead wrist. Have a look at this here. Then we're going to also resist it on the way back here. So we're not going to allow this to break. Now, I've often described this as a lever. Look at my left shoulder and arm forming a single lever. We're going to keep that lever completely intact. If I break it like this, I then the, the mass of that head will simply take over my golf swing. Take me around and I have to do conversation. So we're going to try to keep the mass under control. The mass from falling here and the mass from going there. Backwards and forwards. We're going to get a feel for that just in the lead arm. Then what we're going to do, we're going to put the trail arm in, the right hand here for me. Get a feel of that. Okay, nice and easy. Get ourselves set up to the golf ball. Now, 
don't go for any big shots. The more you react to try and hit it a long way, the more you'll quickly rush the club away. Take your time with this. We get ourselves set up, and then what we're gonna do is this. We're gonna practice this motion. There's one final thing here I want you to have a look at. As I do this, this is a coordinated move away look. I'm not activating the lever there, and notice this. My left bicep here is quite connected to my chest, and it's everything here, my torso, my chest, all working away, look, together, helping it. If I don't move this, I'll swing my arm, swing the mass, I'm gonna be in trouble, look. So I'm moving it away. Once I get that sensation, in comes that right hand, and away we go. Let's have a look at this in action. Very, very slowly to start with. Get ourselves set, rehearse it, backwards and forwards, just get a feel for that. Nice and easy, nice and slow. And away we go. Probably hit that harder than I really needed to do that. I should have taken a bit of that pace off, but all, all I'm doing initially is just working on that takeaway. So, one thing to watch out for here. I mentioned to you about trying to get that club online here in the face there. Where I find that some people get this wrong is they just try to put it there. That is not what we're after. Notice what I said earlier. We've got, we're resisting the weight here by having a kink. We're resisting the weight getting thrown back. So we're kind of getting that sensation. The third and final thing here is this. Keep the butt hand here. When you move the cl club, I often feel, I certainly my clients have found, they like to feel like they move the shaft, not the head. So what they're doing is they're swinging the shaft here and the butt here stays very, very close to the leg. I've often put a T-peg, I'll do it now actually, I've often put a T-peg in the butt end here, look, so you can actually check this. So as I'm here, look, that T-peg's very, very close to my side here. In comes the right hand and away we go. Watch this, if I sling the head, where's the T-peg gone? Way away where my hand's gone. The hands have gone out here and the head goes in here. That's a killer, okay? So we're resisting all those motions. Now, one thing that can make this feel, I hope you uh, learn the feel this, is the orange whip. I've just got a mid-science orange whip. If you want to learn more about it, I'll put the description and the details in the, um, in the description box below. But one of the things you can do with the orange whip, the orange whip is literally whippy. Now, if you get the same thing happen here, look, you can even see, if I, if I kink my wrist here, that weight wants to fall this way. Now, when you swing back, if you rush this, this is gonna get this thing really whipping all over the place. So what you're doing in reality is you can do the exact the same thing. Now, this way, it really gives you instant feedback. I have to be very smooth with this, because if I rush, it's gonna whip around the corner. So I get the sensation, I'm looking after that there, and at no stage I've allowed it to whip and then back in through. So slowly back, through. And you just repeat that in your garden, just getting the sensation, swinging it back here and through. Once you've mapped that out and got a feel for that, just simply put the club behind the golf ball. Again, look at this motion here. I'm resisting the, got a little kink here, resisting the fall here, resisting the slinging back of the club. Get that sensation here. That's it there, all in line. Now again, no big shots, just really, really slow. Really, really slow. The key with this motion initially is it can feel initially, if you're not used to this, it can feel a little bit wooden to start with. That is because obviously you've been possibly used to just slinging the head around very really too, too quickly. So it can feel a bit wooden, but if you just, again, look at this. I take my time with this. I often can I give myself a set. You might just get the rhythm of it first. So look at this. This is still smooth, still coordinated, getting a rhythm. Get yourself set, you might not be perfect. Again, no big shots, don't rush in. Take your time, nice and smooth. And away we go. Now look at the difference. If you're flinging this club around here, you then have to fling it on the way through here. Look at this. You sling the head around, you have to flick it around. That is a really inconsistent way of playing this shot. 
if you look after that face, it will look after you. When you do this, look at this. Look at how consistent that face becomes if you just don't swing the mass too much on the way back, on the way through. Let's have a look finally from the other side. So let's summarize, what have we done? Well look, if you want to get the takeaway in the right slot each and every single time, what you're going to have to do is you want to get the club uh, shaft completely level or in line with your, with your feet. You want the club face parallel to your spine here. These are checkpoints. Question is, they're too difficult to achieve just by thinking about them. It's too complicated. So how do you do that? How do you, how do, you do this on a consistent basis? Remember here, you have a lump of mass here, you want to protect the face. So remember, when you get yourself set up here, the mass of the club head wants to fall down here. Resist it by having a little kink of the lead wrist here like this. Then from there, remember that you don't want to throw the mass quickly because if you do look, if you throw the mass quickly, this is going to activate this lever. We want to keep the lever intact for as long as we possibly can. So we get that sensation, start to get a rhythm of this like this, then bring in your trail hand and away we go. Look at that. I'm, I've got rhythm, but at this stage the mass hasn't been activated. Only now does it get activated and then away we go. We said, look, make it, you can make it life easier by getting this tool here. That speeds up the project, gives you a little bit more feeling because there's a big heavy weight at the end. Obviously, it gives you immediate feedback if you're, if you're getting too handsy. Again, the link is in the description below. Just one final thing as you're doing this, remember it's a coordinated move away. We want the body coordinated. This isn't putting the club in position, that's artificial. What we want to get is this whole thing, my biceps connected to my chest here, it's all working look beautifully together, back and through, back and through. You're looking after that face, you look after the face and the head, it will look after you so you don't have to make all those conversations. Hope you enjoyed the training. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Maybe share it with someone who you think could benefit from a little bit more consistency, particularly from their takeaway. And of course, look, if you're new to the channel and this is one of your first videos of mine, please consider subscribing. I will put some more videos in the links in the description that will really complement this video. So go and check them out too. But until next week, have a great golfing week.